Ayush writes about cricket. He's a cricket enthusiast. He works for cricket, uh, Crick and Oh, sorry, Crick Buzz, and uh, for Crick Buzz, and um, he lives in Bangalore. And he has written a book about women's cricket in Pakistan. So, Ayush, uh, warm welcome to Writers Melon, and I would like to ask you directly tell us about the about some of the very interesting uh, players um, whom you have come across in your journey of writing this book which is basically um, history of women's cricket in pakistan uh, hi priyanka so there were there were a lot of cricketers i mean uh, those starting from the absolute aristocratic families rich people like uh, shaiza and sharmin they were daughters of a rich carpet merchant but they sort of took on a system when there was no cricket system that existed or it existed it existed in limited elite circles of lahore so they they created a system fighting uh, a lot of battles with the government and those in power because women at that time in pakistan were not allowed to play i mean just when they started out try to attempt it to play cricket in pakistan so for two people uh, to actually create an entire system fund it and ensure that cricket happens because these things are usually like in india you see that there's an organized uh, setup that uh, arranges for all of this they generate sponsorship from outside no none of that so there was shaiza khan on one end who comes from an extremely affluent family at the other end you'd find people coming from extremely underprivileged families uh, who have had to go without food had to cut their hair had to disguise as boys had to uh, a plain secrecy from their families from their neighbors from their own brothers uh, so it's an extremely wide range so from shaiza khan to nida dar to uh, uh, saba nazir uh, everyone has a story which is very unique which is very different yet their battles are also different so i mean the circumstances they come from the sacrifices they have to make to be able to just play the game are also different so uh, there were plenty of them uh, and um, yeah i mean it was a learning experience for me throughout this entire because this, these are the stories that i didn't come across in india i mean indian women have also had their challenges but it was so different from anything i'd ever heard before so how uh, does the mainstream media now feel responsible for actually talking more about women's cricket because you are also in the uh, cricket media in journalism uh, did it did it change after uh, the bollywood uh, movie attempt of mitali raj that people now at least know that there is uh, there are some icons of women's cricket even in india so has it has it changed the way media looks at it or focuses its attention on I'm not sure if the movie by itself had an impact because uh, there were a lot of flaws for the movie itself, and it didn't quite work. So I don't think the movie really had an impact. What, what did have an impact was the 2017 World Cup final that India reached. Yes. So and that came at the back of India beating Australia, a very strong team like Australia with Harman Preet Kaur scoring, uh, playing one of possibly the greatest knocks ever uh, in women's cricket. so uh, because those two events sort of turned uh, the focus uh, from media from the perspective of the fans from the kind of coverage they were getting from the kind of sponsorship they were getting so yes 2017 world cup final was the turning point and after that india reached a lot of finals of the 2020 world cup where they were playing in front of a crowd of 86000 people at the biggest venue in the world i mean mcg back then i mean not the world now because it's in ahmedabad but 86000 people turning up to watch a women's game that was a big deal uh, and then they reached the finals of the commonwealth games as well they again won a silver so there are a lot of highs that india has had over these years last 5 to 6 years and with each passing event you can see i mean the last time india hosted an event at home uh, with australia coming in uh, we had packed stadiums we had like i think a crowd people turning up to watch the match on tv so uh, yes i mean all of that has sort of uh, there has been that was the catalyst the 2017 world cup final at lords in front of a packed audience yes i think as an audience also the lens with which uh, an audience looks at uh, a women's sports sports person is let's say tennis or gymnastic you know i mean cricket football and probably more uh, physical games like these are still as just as a mindset uh, perspective For an audience is like okay, I would rather watch a men's cricket, you know. So 
um, I think that is something that's like very ingrained and inherent across the world. So uh, I, I don't know. And, uh, and the answer to that is probably the wins that you're saying, that the matches have to be exciting. Uh, your teams have to win. The teams that you are rooting for has to win. And that only makes it exciting, right? It's sort of a vicious circle. I mean, uh, uh, if you see in India, there has been somewhat of a parity in sort of coverage for racket sports, whether it's badminton, yes. whether it's tennis, whether it's squash, whether you keep listening about even boxing and uh, wrestling. Yes. And if you go down, you'll realize that maybe it comes down to the fact that uh, there are uh, it, these are all individual sports. It's mm. much easier. So coverage comes when you win. And it's much easier to win, especially for uh, players from India, when it's an individual sport. Because an individual may have the sort of support and privilege well, to yes. go on and succeed. Or maybe it might just be one freak of a talent to go, go out there and just achieve all the glory. While in a team sport, you require structures. You need 11 players to be as good and more than 11, in fact, at every school, at every level. So it's much more difficult for a team sport, especially in countries like India, where uh, there isn't a lot of infrastructure to promote sports itself, let alone women's sports. Mm. So uh, for the team to achieve glory will take much longer, while you'll see that uh, there was glory in racket sports for India. Growing up, we read about Sanya Mirza just as much as we read about mm -hmm. Sally and the Pace or Mahesh Bhupati. And this will sort of reflect on people who are reading it. So even when I was growing up, there were my friends who were girls, they were playing badminton with me. They would probably be playing, playing tennis somewhere, but they would not join us for a game of cricket or football. And that is still the case. Yes. Uh, which sort of, because they're seeing that there are women playing out there, they're playing badminton, whether it's PV Sindhu or yeah. uh, Saina Nehwal, whether it's in squash, there's so many players in squash, or even, I mean, turn up wrestling, you have boxing, you have, uh, but in cricket, we have not achieved that kind of glory at the highest level. So maybe it goes down to that, uh, the reason why there are more women participating in racket sports than, uh, say, cricket and football or team sports. Very true. I mean, we can really go on and on discussing cricket and sports because we know how enthusiastic India is about cricket. And that's why I was asking you, do you like really work extra time when there is IPL? Because the whole nation <laughs> is so crazy about cricket, and especially the IPL fever is, I think, and I'm surprised that it is going on for years and the teams are only growing, the players are, new players are coming in and it's such an opportunity for uh, youngsters in India. And I'm uh, really, really happy to see the, uh, you know, the energy and the enthusiasm for this uh, sport growing. Uh, let us talk a little bit more about writing because uh, <laughs> that's, that's uh, what really uh, brought my attention to you and your book and uh, so tell us how has been your writing process like, um, because of course you're a journalist, so writing is your day job. You write every day, a lot of it. Um, but how did writing a book uh, come to you and how was it different? Um, and who are your inspiration for this? Um, so, yes, as, I, as you mentioned, I write cricket on a daily basis, but there was this one story. So I had a broken leg at one point of time. I was in bed rest. I didn't have anything to do. I was talking to some of the Pakistani players. I was a little surprised by their stories and it seemed different. It felt different. And when I went to search, I mean, just do a background research on their cricket, I couldn't find a lot. Mm. So I thought I might as well write it because there's no literature available on Pakistan women's cricket. So that is what sort of uh, got me to writing this book. Uh, the difference, of course, was, I mean, this was a constant battle because writing for a website, you know, you're, uh, you, you're not writing too many long form features. You're not writing one lakh words. You're still cutting down to 2000 words at best. So, uh, yes, here I had to sort of work on character building. But again, the story was sort of quite far from me as an Indian man to be writing on Pakistani women and trying to understand their lives. And... So a lot of things I couldn't say from my perspective. I had to let them say it uh, for themselves. Uh, I couldn't bring in my perspective. So maybe in other books, I might be able to do that with other subjects. But this subject, I had to let the protagonist just tell the story out. So that was the difference. And uh, writing, I, I, I don't know, inspiration, it just came to me maybe through my genes or whatever. My grandfather was a writer, uh, but he wrote in Hindi and uh, Kannada. Uh, but I, before I realized I was writing and this is something my mother and my grandmother sort of spotted that I'm writing stuff. 
and then they told me stories about my grandfather which i had no idea about <laughs> great so it must be really great that you have writing as your day job and as your passion on the side to write books so uh, i look forward to more uh, more sports related books from you ayush and wish you all the best i'm so glad that we could talk today and uh, yes thank you so much for your time thanks a lot priyanka thanks a lot